Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, Hiba, you are audible. Yes. Uh, good morning. Am I, am I audible? Yeah, you? Yes, you are audible. Okay. So can we start the session now? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, good morning, one and all. I'm so we are having Ms. Ananya Sabar, an academic consultant of Odisha State Open University. So today, she will be discussing on topic gender and human rights. And the writer is Chinamanda Naguzi Adichi. And she has written, we should all be feminists. So this is a very relevant topic regarding the present scenario. So I would request Ms. Ananya, ma'am, to kindly start the session. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, Heba, ma'am. First of all, I would like to thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to discuss and to bring to put forth this premise, this uh, pertinent premise, which is uh, uh, apparently feminism. Um, in front of uh, everybody. Uh, this is uh, undoubtedly one of the most uh, uh, pertinent topics and one of the most uh, burning topics, so we can say hot topics in the present day scenario. But uh, sometimes there are a, cert a certain times when we actually fail to understand the meaning of feminism. Oh, we, uh, as uh, and mostly, uh, we uh, women, those who are uh, actually those who actually claim themselves feminist, we end up uh, giving feminism an entire different meaning or an entire different definition, which uh, is discussed by Chimamanda Adichie in uh, this uh, particular uh, talk or in this particular uh, uh, TED talk that uh, she uh, performed in the year 2013 and uh, she is a nigerian writer uh, she is a nigerian novelist who has written uh, very famous works like purple hibiscus and americana and uh, most of her uh, writings are uh, deals with uh, uh, women rights and human rights on a whole uh, so Let's start. And uh, she started this uh, TED Talk session with a very, uh, with a very uh, funny, or we can say, with a very humorous example. She quoted the example uh, when she was young, and she had a friend uh, with whom she used to argue on something, and they were in seventh or eighth grade, I guess, and they were arguing on a certain thing. And uh, the friend suddenly spurted out and said that, uh, hey, you are a feminist. So uh, Adichie was, uh, she was uh, uh, surprised. She was astonished by the fact that, and that word was very new for her. Very, it was, uh, uh, it was a novel word for her. And she was uh, surprised and she was like, what is the meaning of feminist? And at that time, both were not able to actually define the meaning of feminism. So it was uh, like, some, some new word came, came into his mind and he just told it uh, or spurted it out in front of her, his friend and uh, Adichie, who was still very young to comprehend with the meaning of this word, couldn't uh, understand the meaning of this word. Then uh, suddenly, she, okay, before that, let me uh, give you a br brief history about feminism. Actually, feminism, uh, you will get a lot of history about feminism and you can get to know about it uh, through uh, uh, Google and through a lot of uh, sources. Uh, but uh, feminism is something that has been uh, suppressed, that has been... Uh, and that has also been extremized in a lot of way with times. So it started, if we say that it uh, particularly started or it uh, started by in the year, uh, um, maybe by the end of 16th century or 17th century. And then at that time, what happened is uh, a lot of feminist writers, they were very extremist. They uh, were so uh, opinionated and they were so... Uh, uh, obsessed with the rights, with uh, uh, with the rights that uh, 
they uh, wanted to claim for themselves that they took feminism in a very wrong way in a very different way and uh, first they used to claim they they claimed at that point of time that feminism is something where uh, the women or the female gender should oppress the male gender just like the male gender is oppressing the female gender and this uh, started with uh, helen sixu uh, h e l e n e helen s i x o u s helen sixu uh, in her uh, essay the laugh of medusa where uh, she has uh, taken uh, references from uh, uh, from a uh, Uh, uh from a greek mythology and she has explained how men should be oppressed like they have op- they have been oppressing women and they should be uh, ruined and they should be stamped under the the feet of women and uh, soon after that when times evolved slowly then the entire meaning of feminism was changed from oppression to equality now if we talk about feminism now if somebody asks about uh, asks you about feminism then we are supposed to say that feminism deals with the equal rights of both ma- male and female okay and when we say and we, when we talk about equal rights we actually mean equal rights and uh, and uh, and talking about uh, this world talking about the world that is now evolving that is now embracing feminism we or uh, we also have a con- we also had a contrary world okay years back when men were told to be the stalwarts of uh, strength and uh, courage and uh, physical uh, 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 masculinity etc so because that was the time you know when kings ruled or when kings and emperors ruled most of the things or most of the tasks that were done uh, was totally physical and for that uh, they uh, and for that uh, people needed men because men have a uh, Uh, a wide range of testosterone running in their body and the the amount of testosterone in their body is uh, a lot more as compared to that of women so uh, they you, they had to fight wars they had to make uh, those uh, uh, weapons metal weapons and they had to uh, be soldiers comrades in the palace of the king so that was a very strengthful job and the, a lot of physical strength was required uh, in those jobs and that is the reason why slowly this operation of women th- came into being all right and from and from there oh, we all have now even now also we all have this tendency or this we have all built this tendency or psyche of uh, considering men somewhat considering men somewhat uh, standing in a higher pedestal than the women all right so let's now discuss what abici has to say about feminism to all of us now abici gave us a few very beautiful examples uh, from from where she started this entire uh, uh, this entire uh, ted talk then he, she uh, slowly uh, moving on she gave another example that uh, while she was still very young i think she was in the 6th grade and at that time we we all know about class monitors uh, we all wanted to be class monitors at least i loved being the class monitor though i never ended up be- being one but uh, i always liked uh, you know ruling people with those rulers and and everything and uh, uh, you know i wanted that you know people should listen to me because class monitors were considered uh, next to uh, uh, teachers okay when a teacher is not there you are supposed to listen to the class monitor your class monitor is supposed to dominate you your class monitor is supposed to uh, be rude with you and once if your name is written in the blackboard oh god then you are gone if uh, the class monitor writes your name that you were talking or creating distraction in the class while the teacher was not there then 
you are <laughs> that's the time for you to rot in hell so <laughs> basically uh, i was the one who never ended up being the class monitor but yes my name was constantly written on the blackboard for creating distraction in the class so it ha- always happened the other way around but adichi was a very bright student and uh, she was a uh, very bright student she always uh, stood first in the class and uh, she always uh, uh was uh, very obedient and very attentive in the class and and teachers loved her okay but and and there was another guy who was equally uh, who was uh, equally uh, attentive who was equally uh, uh, who was equally attentive and who was equally uh, a class topper like adichi but uh, the the Uh, the responsibility of being a monitor was given to that boy that that guy who was uh, who was the contemporary of adichi why because that person or that boy was a man or or a boy and she was a girl so the teacher obviously felt that having a class monitor having a boy as a class monitor would be more helpful than having a girl as a class monitor okay and this and moving on she gave another very funny example a very um, i guess uh, a very pertinent example i think this we all girls or all uh, women will actually uh, agree with this example so once uh, adichi and uh, one of her friends they Yeah, for a while we will be continuing the session. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. I it did. I mean, the session. I mean, my call just got disconnected. I'm extremely sorry, everybody. So yeah, am I audible now? Am I audible, my students? Anybody can answer. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, all right, all right. So yeah, so I was talking about another uh, very. Uh, may I please request all of you to kindly uh, switch. I mean, switch off your microphones. Yeah. So another example. This this is a very funny example. And when I heard this example, I literally rolled on the floor laughing. If you, <laughs> if you actually, you know, uh, consider this happening in the present day scenario, which actually happens. Okay. so once edichi and uh, one of her friend who was a male friend who happened to be a male friend they went uh, to a restaurant okay and it was a very posh restaurant it was a a, a very uh, you know standardized and so called the star restaurant where where they went for dinner and uh, this uh, guy came up uh, the, he was the security guy and he asked them that uh, let me Uh, park your cars which generally happens we all must have seen in televisions that uh, you know in uh, in uh, these huge restaurants you always have uh, two security guards one security guard will open the door for you and there is this another security guard who will park your vehicle or who will park your car or whatever whatsoever you have gone into that hotel uh so there was this security guard or it was this man who came forward and very happily and very uh, um in a very cordial manner in a very friendly and cordial manner in a gentlemanly way he told that uh, ma'am uh, please let me park your car so he took their car and he parked it and when he came back adichi was very impressed with that man that he is so gentlemanly he is so uh, cordial and uh, he parked the car so well so what adichi did was she took out money from her purse it was and mark my words it was her hard earned money that she has earned working day and night right so she took out a uh, a few bucks from her purse and she handed it over to the security guard who parked the vehicle and just uh, pay attention to what the security guard said the security guard said thank you sir thank you sir instead of saying thank you to adichi she he said thank you sir so he made this thing uh, he made up this thing in mind that these two are couples the uh, 
the man is the ha, ha, man i mean husband and the and, and the lady who is adichi is the wife so they both have come for come here for dinner and the money all the money that adichi has or all the money that the lady has is actually the money given by her to the man so this is the type of mentality or this is the type of psyche that i am talking about that i am trying to explain it to you uh, or adichi is trying to explain it to you all right now one more example if uh, we see in our lives uh, uh, is uh, you know uh, we raise we raise uh, as as indian parents or i'm i'm not a parent yet but i have seen a lot of parents i have seen my brothers i have seen my sisters raising their children and uh, i don't blame them they are very modern and they are very uh, you know uh, they have accustomed their child with all the modern amenities and all the modern um what to say uh, luxuries they can but the only thing where they lack is where i feel i personally feel this is my personal opinion quote i am not quoting anybody i'm not uh, uh, blaming anyone for this thing but this is my personal opinion is this is what i feel that they have actually uh, done a few mistakes in uh, raising their child like for example if uh, i'll t- i'll tell about one of my cousins uh, who has a baby boy and uh, uh, from the very beginning i mean when the then when the child got his senses when he was around 3 to 4 years whenever he cried he was always there, he was always told that are kai kandu tu tu po pila ta par tu kai kandu tu po pila mane kanun thi you know boys don't cry because they are boys and they shouldn't cry because if they cry then that will become a blasphemy that will become a uh, uh, that is like you know if, if a boy starts crying then that is totally feminine surely feminine uh, you know and the boy shouldn't show any signs of fem- and a boy should never show any signs of femininity in him okay and whenever he'll uh, he fall in class or you know he'll get hurt he he start crying and his mother or his father or his uh, governess would be like why are you crying you're not a girl that you will start crying so, and uh, then uh, in case of girls also i also have another niece who is always told to keep quiet not to speak much in front of others and to come home at time just because she is a girl and she is uh, told that uh, you know when she was young when she was uh, in uh, class i guess 2 uh, or class 3 she was always told that do not talk to uh, the boys in your classes because boys are very selfish they are very mean i I, and I, i was like i was stunned by the statement i was like oh my god in that way i go to office i have nearly hundreds of colleagues who are men i think even i shouldn't i should stop talking to those men also and that actually gave me a feeling that actually gave me a very cringy feeling that how can parents teach these things to the children it is not hampering the girls only it is also hampering the boys all right uh, if every girl, if every girl starts to think to think like every boy existing on the surface of this earth is uh, is a moron is a stupid is idiotic is uh, uh, selfish is mean then how, then all the girls will end up stabbing every guy that comes her way all right and in that way where is existence where is uh, the term coexistence coming into play here we always say a, a lot of things about coexistence coexistence should be like this coexistence should be like this coexistence should have this coexistence should have that but we forget one very important thing that coexist what we need as coexistence is humanity that we are forgetting we are always dividing human human beings into male female transgender bisexual gay lesbian etc 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 but we are forgetting that we all are bipeds we all have two eyes one nose one mouth two ears two hands two legs and we are all equal we are all same 
why this discrimination between men between women between transgenders why can why cannot we take forward a single idea and that is the idea of humanity now say for example marriage marriage is by far the most contradicting the most uh, i guess uh, uh, i'm not getting the word uh, i guess marriage is by far the most contradicting the most derogatory and sometimes the most corrupted institution is what i feel especially indian marriages okay i feel that they are uh, very confusing okay uh, you know where a girl is taught to talk silently you know when the guy's parents come to see her and the girl is uh, advised or the girl is uh, told or she is ordered by her parents that chup rahibo munoda talku karke basithilu se basithibo besi katha hamune besi gappi bune besi kahi bune kichhe and uh, whereas on the other hand the guy is not taught anything like that the guy is like you just go you see if the girl is able to fulfill all your uh, your wish list then you accept that girl otherwise hamare paas to bahut sare options hain because hum to bhai raja hain and we have a lot of options because we are men and agar hamare haath mein paisa hai then hamara chahe hamara character chahe hamara nature chahe hamara hamari shakal chahe hamari akal jaise bhi ho everybody is bound to accept us and that is what is taught in every household every household sometimes even my mother just a minute just a minute so that is what even my, uh, see my parents are very my parents never teach me this my parents never uh, you know they are the kind of people who are very supportive and who actually support feminism more than anything else in this world and they believe that uh, you know a girl should be uh, opinionated uh, uh, rightly opinionated not in the wrong way uh, it, it, she should be equal she should be uh, given equal amount of acknowledgement even equal amount of respect everywhere and they mean it they never say that uh, you know get married or it's time for you to get married or uh, you know start uh, preparing yourself to get married don't do this don't do that i don't get that at my place but there are a lot of my friends who face this kind of scenario uh, you know if they keep their houses unclean if they uh, you know scatter their clothes on uh, the bed then then the one taunt that they get is to kon jhop le ke ete ye re rohu to ete asna re ete asna kar ke rohu to room ta go so that is that is this very conservative and very traditional taunt or the very traditional comment that we get from our mothers even uh, you know few years back even my mom also used to uh, you know tell me that that uh, you know being a girl how can you keep yourself so untidy how can your uh, you can scatter your dresses all around your uh, chairs table sofa and bed but in on the other hand she won't say anything to my brother and but eventually when i explained these things to her when she knew that oh my god my daughter is now turning into a rebellious feminist so she stopped and she understood she understood that uh, these things uh, come with equality so when now whenever she tells me to clean my room she also tells my brother to clean his room now when she tells me to cook food she also tells my brother to uh, cook food or maybe clean the house so now the responsibilities are totally equal at my place there is no uh, uh, there is no are tu po pila ta ke eta kar tu jo pila ta chu bole eta kar there is no such discrimination but this this discrimination with my house is not the only uh, thing on this world or or the only house in this world there are a lot of houses in this world that face similar kind of discrimination like i told you i have a lot of friends who always get a lot of scolding from their mother regarding the cleaning their houses or not being able to cook etc etc so we have made it in their mind we have uh, we have trained our minds or we have trained our families or we have trained our children in such a way that uh, we uh, for men it is always uh, uh, 
uh, it is always a, a, a free world but for the women it is always not only for women actually as a matter of fact even for uh, the transgenders even for the people who are who do not fulfill the uh, those uh, standards of the society uh, those uh, those regulations of the society that we have made okay uh, transgender are pe- transgender uh, are the people who are a bit different from us they do not go in the traditional or the conventional way they are a bit they go uh, somewhat uh, you know they cross we have a crossroad with them with the transgender uh, people and uh, that makes us think that uh, that makes us think that you know they, they these people are not worthy talking these people are not worthy uh, our respect our acknowledgement but why 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 is the question why are they not uh, deserving of our acknowledgement why are they not deserving of our respect what did they do what is their fault is it their fault that they are built a bit differently is it their fault that they maybe they do not uh, fulfill our traditional standards of uh, being a man or being a woman so this kind of discrimination is everywhere it it pertains everywhere and this is the kind of uh, discrimination that adichi is also talking about she is giving us an idea that uh, men and women or girls and boys should be raised in in such a way that both give respect both give equal acknowledgement to each other okay so i have got a message that please come to video teaching process it is not active learning process we became boring all right fine so you are you asking me to switch on my video yes mr prashant mahanti okay all right okay so good morning everybody and i don't know how is my video helping because i'll be saying the same thing the same words i was telling in the audio but anyways here we are taught to give preference to our students to our learners at osou so yes your wish is our command and that is the reason i have switched on my video i generally don't attend to switch on my video because that's my personal choice because uh, doesn't make any difference okay i will tell you uh, it's not it's not like i i'm going to tell you something different when i switch on my video and i'll go, i'm going to tell you something different when i switch on my audio so anyways all right so moving on so the kind of uh, uh, idea that i want to give you is about coexistence so we are talking about coexistence and where on one hand uh, we say that uh, we should coexist we should be uh, equal we should give equal rights and equal opportunities to everyone there on the other hand we are suppressing a few very important uh, genders or we, a few very important humans in our lives we suppress even sometimes uh, i see a lot of uh, children you know disrespecting their mothers who tend to be housewives telling them that are tumhe kuch jaane na tumhe dwara kuch hai pari bani tumhe kon jaane cha technology bhi sir i have i have seen a lot of uh, you know those those logger heads and uh, uh, i would say ill mannered children who uh, tell their uh, mothers that you know you are a housewife how what do you know about life or what do you know about about the world dude she brought you to this world and you are teaching her what is this world like don't do that i mean i don't know uh, the age limit of you learners but uh, if there is anybody who is younger who is uh, at a very tender age then let me tell you do not disrespect your mothers just because they are housewives and do not give a lot of importance to your fathers just because they fulfill all your financial um, needs everything should be equal the way you uh, you should equally respect your mother as well as your father all right so now coming back to adichi so there 
she mentions she also mentions that there is this immediate need of actually um teaching our children to uh, grow in a certain way where we give respect to the person who is existing along with us not below us not over us not under us not over us but along with us we should make to we we should not say uh, our boys that don't cry you are a boy but rather we should teach them that be sensitive if you feel like crying cry if you feel like letting your anger out or letting your uh, uh, fears out through tears do that because that is that will make you more uh, sensitive towards uh, each other's uh, feelings or towards each other's uh, uh, you know uh, feelings and towards each other's uh, uh emotions okay we should teach and we should teach our ladies or we should teach our girls to be more uh to respect the your fellow male people you should not go out with the mentality or with the psyche that every man i see or every man i target is a selfish man or is an idiot or is the one who is uh, uh you know degrading women no not every man are same men are different there are a few people who might be disrespectful uh, towards the women but there are a lot of people who are also very respectful towards women say for instance our brothers our fathers so if we do not respect our brother if we are if we have a lot of respect and lot of love for our fathers and for our brothers then why can't we respect others fathers and others brothers and same goes for the men also if you are respecting your sister your mother then we should also learn how to uh, respect somebody else's sister or somebody else's mother so everything that comes here is with everything that is related uh, 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 everything that adichi wants to uh, you know um, uh, convey is upbringing the most important thing is upbringing we should train our children to respect each other especially to respect for existence uh so now i would just like to like you all to actually listen to one of my narration that i wrote uh, you know years back this is a very this is a very old narration i'll end after this and uh, this is uh, about feminism this is actually the real meaning about feminism i mean what i feel feminism is so i'll 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 read this narration to you and this is how you can understand uh, what feminism is so here we go this is my narration and i'm not quoting anybody here because this is what i have written this is what i feel personally okay so the title is feminism explained in its simplest form we don't expect you to offer no this is what i have to tell the society or i am telling to the uh, male dominant society okay we don't expect you to offer us bus seats just keeping your hands and your distorted psyche to yourselves will be enough we don't expect you to buy us expensive clothes and gifts just keeping your lewd comments and loathed eyes to yourselves would be enough we do not expect you to bend on your knees every time you propose just don't label us as a des- as desperate whores when we bend for love and that's enough trust me we can work with a month without a month pay and won't even demand leaves on menstruating days just don't let the power in your head reach your pants and i guess that would be enough We don't expect a wedding that would cost you half a fortune but treating us as a real equal over a virtual better would be enough. We are not here to tamper anybody's identity. Just let us create one for our own and that my friend is enough. See, we are not uh, as as uh the uh, as women we are not expecting that uh, you know you should treat us like a privileged to the society all of us are a privileged to society uh, women as well as men everybody as well as the third gender everybody is a privileged to the society we just want you to treat us like humans acknowledging us respecting us in the same way you acknowledge your fellow 
men or your fellow boys or your fellow uh, genders so that's it and there uh, you know uh, quoting atichi again she has yet another beautiful thing to say is that you know uh, in this hierarchy in this working class society where uh, women these days we are getting the opportunity you know opportunity uh so in this world we women we women are getting an opportunity to uh, actually work yes of course i have to use the word opportunity because uh, you know people feel that they are letting women work that is a very big thing i have a few of my friends uh who have this kind of thought whose husbands or whose uh uh you know partners love partners or boyfriend these they have these kind of thoughts that oh i'm letting my girl work or oh i'm letting my wife work and that and they take credit in that excuse me nobody is letting anybody work here we are working for our own will we are working for ourselves we are not working because anybody allowed us or because somebody allowed us to work so stop contemplating that i allowed you to work i especially the men stop saying that you know i am allowing you to do this i am allowing you to do that this sh- that should that should not be the scenario you are no one to allow someone to do something for their way of living all right uh, and yeah talking about the working class society many a times we see that we, you know where, wherever in 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 an office uh, we generally found, find men being the ceos or being the owners or being the uh, Uh, you know uh, people in the higher hierarchy uh, but there are very few women as we climb higher in the uh, in the layers of uh, this working class we find that there are a very uh, few uh, very few women actually who are in the top you know uh, you know we can uh, few are uh, exceptional of course but generally but generally we feel uh, we feel like we we know that uh, these uh, this thing it happens you know as uh, we grow over uh, the top in this working class uh, uh, place we see that women uh, you know reduce the the amount of women who who have reached that uh, that uh, authority have merely decreased to barely one or two women mm-hmm. in some places and that too in some places all right so this is what she wants to convey and apart from that she also she is also trying to convey that uh, men have a very strong physique that is true men uh, you know tend to have as i said that uh, uh, you know they have they secrete high levels of uh, testosterone so yes they are very uh, strong uh, physically but uh, the more they are strong physically the more fragile their egos are and why is that ego so fragile because the society the upbringing has made those egos so fragile because we have the men in our societies they have been trained this way that you are a boy or you are a man you have to do this you have to do that you uh, have to keep your wife in your fingertips or otherwise hath to fisal jayegi and all these things you don't have to cry because you are not a girl so all these things have made their ego so fragile earns more than his husband then it is considered to be a very uh, 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 you know smacking hit of ego for the man so this is how it happens so adichi uh, lastly she concludes that she, she is expecting a world where this kind of uh, discrimination is uh, uh, put to an end and in fact we should uh, equally consider we should be equally considerate we should equally acknowledge we should equally respect each and every gender created on the surface of this earth be it, be it men be it women or be it the transgender all right so with these words i conclude my session any doubts do you have questions anybody do you have questions anybody Huh. 
I suppose I suppose there are no questions, so I think uh, we can call this session an end. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for such a wonderful session. I would request the participants. You can even unmute your mic and directly interact with the resource person, or you can give your viewpoint regarding the today's topic even. To make the session quite interactive, participants. Just listening won't do. You have to participate. I guess this is a uh, uh, quite a debatable topic, and if you want, you can share your views. You can share your experiences. Uh, anything like I shared my personal experiences. I shared about my. Uh, the things that i have faced in the society uh, as a woman so even i guess even you can uh, share your experiences or you can share your viewpoints prashant mahanti at least you can start Start the topic. That what you felt about the topic. What is your viewpoint? Yes. Ma, ma, my question is that I am just late for joining. Uh, in gender role, what is the masculine role? I mean, I mean, what is the masculine role? Role is that. What is it? 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 See, there are no such masculine or feminine roles entitled to, uh, you know. Can you please switch off your mic? I'll answer your question. Please switch off your mic. It's creating disturbance. Yeah, thank you. So there are there are no particular roles. Our role is, as I said, equally acknowledging, equally respecting each other. It's not only for uh, men only. it is not only the men's duty is to respect and to acknowledge and to consider the existence of women but it is equally the responsibility of the women to acknowledge to consider uh, to uh, respect the existence of men and even talking about the third gender also now that they have got uh, an equal place in the society just like we have so even our responsibility towards them is we should also acknowledge their existence we should also acknowledge uh uh their uh, existence in the society and similarly even they should acknowledge you know i i have uh, talked to a lot of transgender people uh who are and few of them are very good friends of mine but you know initially when i started talking to them there was this sense of uh, apprehension the sense of fear of interacting with someone who is conventionally called as a normal human being in the society because they were scared of this normalcy because they felt that they are outcasted but this should not be the scenario they shouldn't be afraid of us they should treat us equally and even we should treat them equally now if today i get married to a man who is uh, who is earning lesser than me than i am or uh, who is intimidated by my existence okay who is afraid of me in a certain way because he thinks that i'm dominating and i am uh, uh, or, 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 or you know i'm I'm an autocrat. Uh, then I I don't think that that marriage holds any kind of uh, existence or that marriage holds any kind of uh, uh, meaning. and same uh, happens uh, with uh, me also if i think that my partner is dominating if i think my partner is dominating he is very ruly he is very uh, autocratic in his approach then i don't think that uh, uh, you know that the marriage stands anywhere uh, uh, that marriage stands anywhere uh, uh, sensible so that that is that is what i'm talking about that is what i'm trying to put forth that uh, we all have we all have our rules and responsibilities our duties towards each other there is there are no specific responsibilities the only responsibility is we are we we should and in fact uh, it is our prime duty to respect the fellow our fellow existing partners 
I open for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma Hello, ma'am. Yes, Hello. okay. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, another is, uh, do sex role stereotypes reflect the true situation? One diagram is in, in our book. Mm -hmm. um, the, the diagram is uh, females uh, A emotional, males C not emotional, B1, B2. I can understand the proper um, diagram, what, what it shows. Can you explain, please? Uh, I couldn't get your question. Could you please repeat your question, Prashan? Do sex role stereotypes reflect the true situation? Okay, fine. I'll give this answer. No need to explain me the diagram. I will give you my answer. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, they do. Uh, see, uh, please uh, kindly switch off your mic. See, these uh, gender stereotypes, or we can say sex stereotypes, they affect our lives. And that is the reality. Our lives are affected. Our lives are uh, actually mostly intimidated with these stereotypes. Okay. Uh, we have this set of, uh, like I said, you know, when a child is born, if he is a boy, he is trained uh, from childhood that, see, you are a boy, you're not supposed to cry. Okay. And that makes this uh, a scenario and that makes this stereotype that, uh, girls are more emotional than boys. Are bhai, tum boys ko apna emotions went out karne doge nahi. Unko bachpan se yehi sikhaoge ki uh, tum apne emotions ko kabu mein karna sikho. Tum ro mat, tum uh, gussa mat karo, tum uh, uh, aasu mat nikalo apne aankhon se. Uh, Kya agar tum aisa karte ho to tum ladki ban jaoge. To kahan se honge boys emotional? This is one stereotype I'm talking about. There are thousands and zillions and millions of these kind of stereotypes exist in, in this world okay yes they affect our lives they do affect our lives they in fact they affect the life of the person who has been trained with this kind of idea that no i'm a boy i shouldn't cry no i'm a boy i shouldn't be emotional I, i'm a boy i shouldn't be sensitive and the, this is the thing and it affects the human uh, society in such a way that uh, people end up doing rape, people end up murdering girls, people end up doing molestation. Why all these things happen? Because they are trained in a certain way that, see, these uh, women are below your uh, uh, foot and you should always keep them below your foot. You shouldn't be like women. You shouldn't gossip because, you know, gossip is totally feminine. Okay? You shouldn't... Uh, Oh, uh, you know, wear saris in dramas or in dances because that is so feminine. You shouldn't perform Odissi dance because, hey, that's feminine. You shouldn't perform any form of classical dances because that is feminine. So, yes, there are these kind of stereotypes that affect our life and, and that makes, uh, you know, people like uh, rapists, people like molesters, they, uh, they are born out of these stereotypes. I hope I'm clear. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Come on. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Anybody else is having any queries and they can yeah, query that we can have a discussion on this topic. Yeah, be free. Purandar Barik, please do share your views regarding this topic. Just two candidates are there, just two participants are there. So please, this is an interactive. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for such a wonderful session. And we are looking thank forward so for much. more sessions with you. I would like to thank the technical team and all the participants who made the session successful. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks a lot to one and all. Thank you, ma'am.